In this video, I'll be showing you how to use algebra tiles to model a variety of different algebraic concepts for your students. Algebra tiles are multicolored square and rectangular tiles that are used to visualize algebra. A basic set includes some small square tiles, each of which represents a value of one unit or one, some skinny rectangular pieces, each of which represents a value of x, and some larger squares to represent the value of x squared. If we take the x tile and lay it alongside the x squared piece, we can see that the x squared tile is literally a square with side length x. Each tile can also be positive or negative. In the set I'll be using, the yellow tiles are positive 1, the green tiles are positive x, and the blue tiles are positive x squared. However, when I flip each of these tiles over, you'll notice the color red is used to represent a negative value for all three shapes, negative 1, negative x, and negative x squared. The important thing to keep in mind about the negative algebra tiles is that positive and negative pairs of the same tile type cancel each other out. In other words, the combined value of each of these three pairs is zero. By combining different tile types, we can model any basic algebraic expression, like 3x minus 4, or like 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. This can be used as a foundation for modeling a variety of other algebraic concepts, such as combining like terms, evaluating and solving equations, multiplying binomials, and more. Let's check out some examples. You can use algebra tiles to model solving one-step equations. In order to do this, it's helpful for each student to have a whiteboard or blank piece of paper and a dry erase or permanent marker. Begin by drawing a line across the top of the board, about an inch and a half from the top. Write the equation you wish to solve above this line. Underneath the equal sign, draw a line coming down to divide the two sides of your equation. Next, use the algebra tiles to model the equation on each side. Now my goal in solving equations is to get x on its own. So I'm going to take my side with the x tiles and divide it into three equal groups of 1x each. Now I know that whatever I do to one side of my equation, I must also do to the other side. So I'm going to come over here to the unit tiles and divide them into three groups. Now I can see that each individual x is equivalent to a group of three unit tiles. In other words, x equals 3. Solving multi-step equations with algebra tiles is a lot like solving single-step equations. For example, let's say I have the equation 2x minus 4 equals negative 2. I'll start by modeling each side of the equation with my algebra tiles. Now since I'm solving an equation, I'm going to reverse the order of operations I normally use and start with any addition or subtraction I need to do. In this case, I have these minus four tiles over here that I need to get rid of. So how can I get rid of these four negative tiles? By bringing in four positive units to cancel them out. These will all cancel each other out, which means I can take them all away. Now, of course, what I do to one side of my equation, I have to do to the other side which means I need to add four positive tiles onto this side of my equation. Now two of these yellow tiles are going to pair up with the red tiles and cancel each other out, leaving me with positive two. All right, that takes care of the first step, but I still don't have x by itself. I have 2x. So just like in the last example, I'm going to split each side of my equation up into two equal groups. This shows me that the value of 1x is equal to 1 unit. In other words, x equals 1. Before getting into more advanced algebra concepts, these tiles can be a great tool for helping students understand operations with signed numbers. Now, since I'm not working with variables here, I'm only going to be using the yellow and red single unit tiles. Let's say I want to model the problem positive 3 plus negative 5. 
I'm going to start out by bringing in three positive yellow unit tiles to represent the positive three. Next, I'm going to bring in five red negative unit tiles to represent the negative five. Now three of these red tiles are going to pair up with three of the yellow tiles and all of that is going to get canceled out. That leaves me with just two red negative tiles. In other words, negative two. Now let's say I want to subtract negative five. We're gonna start out the same way by bringing in positive three yellow unit tiles. Now we know that subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive, so we could just add in five yellow unit tiles and call it good. But we can also use the tiles to actually show why subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. Let me show you. So if we wanted to represent taking away negatives with the tiles, we would want to remove red tiles, right? But I don't have any red tiles to work with on my board right now. However, I do have a way of adding red tiles to the board without changing the value of the number. If for every red tile I add, I also add a yellow tile to cancel out its value. Now, the total value on the board is still positive 1, 2, 3, because all the rest of these tiles cancel each other out. Now, I'm going to move forward with taking away negative 5. So I'm going to take away 5 red tiles. Now, this leaves me with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 yellow tiles, or positive 8. All right, now let's talk about multiplication. I can represent a simple multiplication problem by taking a group of tiles and replicating it a given number of times. Now, if my factor is negative, all I have to do is flip each tile over. In this case, that's going to give me an answer of negative six. This works for division as well. Let's say I want to take my negative 6 and divide it by negative 3. So first, I'm going to take my negative 6 and divide it up into three equal groups. That's going to leave me with two tiles in each group. Now, because my divisor is negative, I need to flip over those tiles. And that's going to leave me with my final answer of positive 2. One of the most fundamental practices we teach in algebra is how to evaluate an expression for a given value of x. So let's say I want to evaluate the expression x squared minus 4x plus 1 when x equals 2. So I'm going to start out by modeling my expression with the algebra tiles. So I'm going to bring in one x squared tile, four red or negative x tiles, and one positive unit tile. Now I've been told that x equals two, and I can represent that with two yellow unit tiles. Now what I'm going to do to evaluate this expression is anytime I have an x, I'm going to want to replace that with those two yellow unit tiles. So I'm gonna start from the end and work backwards, starting with this yellow unit tile. Now I don't have to replace this or do anything with this because it's already a number. So now I'm going to move on to my X tiles. Again, for each X tile, I'm going to replace it with two unit tiles. But here's the catch. Because this X tile is negative, I need to make my unit tiles negative as well. So that's an important step that we don't wanna forget. And finally, that brings us to the x squared tile. Now, for the x squared tile, what we're actually going to want to do is build a square that is x units wide and x units long. So because my x is 2, I'm actually building myself a 2 by 2 square.
So once all my variables are gone, all that's left for me to do is to find the combined value of all these tiles. So I'm going to start out by pairing up my positive negative pairs and canceling those out. And that eventually leaves me just with some negative tiles and I can count them up to find my answer. So I've got negative one, negative two, negative three. And that means for this expression, when x equals two, the value is negative three. You can use algebra tiles to model the combination of like terms when adding, subtracting, or simplifying polynomials. Let's say we have two polynomials, two x squared plus three x minus six, and negative x squared plus 2x plus 4, and we want to add them together. So we're going to start out, as usual, by modeling each of these polynomials with our algebra tiles. Now with algebra tiles, combining like terms is the same thing as combining like tiles. So to add these two together, all I need to do is put tiles of the same type together and cancel out any positive negative pairs. Eventually, this leaves me with one positive x squared tile, one, two, three, four, five positive x tiles, and one, two negative unit tiles, giving me a final answer of x squared plus 5x minus 2. When subtracting polynomials, we start out the same way with modeling each polynomial with the algebra tiles. Then what we want to do is take the polynomial that's being taken away or subtracted and actually flip over or change the sign of every tile in that polynomial. Once we've done that, we're going to go through the same process of combining like tiles and canceling out any positive negative pairs. And that's going to leave us with our final answer here of 3x squared plus 1x plus 10. My personal favorite way to use algebra tiles is as a method for multiplying binomials. So to do this, you're going to want your students to draw what's called a t-chart, which will look like this. And then we want to actually take each of these binomials and model them on each line of the t-chart. Now, we know in order to multiply binomials, we need to take each term in the first binomial and multiply it by each term in the second binomial. So this is the exact same process that we're going to go through with the tiles. Um, I'm going to start with the first tile on the horizontal line, so this x tile right here, and I'm going to multiply it by each of the tiles on the vertical line moving down. So I'll start with x times x, and that's going to give me x squared. And you will notice that this x squared tile is going to fit very neatly in its place on the t-chart. So now I have an x times 1 unit, which of course is going to give me value of x. And then I have another x times 1 to give me another x. And a third x times 1 to give me a third x. All right. Now moving on to the second term on the horizontal line, I have a single unit tile, so that's going to be 1 times this first x here, which is going to give me x again. And then from there, I have three instances of 1 times 1. So I'm going to fill in the remaining spots on my t-chart with three unit tiles. And when you're finished going through this process, you should notice that it's a very neatly filled in rectangle that aligns with your two original binomials. So now I'm going to remove the original binomial representations from my chart. So I'm just working with my answer. Uh, and all I have to do is combine the like terms here. So I have an x squared. I have one, two, three, four x's. And I have one, two, three units. So this is going to give me a combined final answer of x squared plus 4x 
plus three. Now let's take a look at what happens when one or more values within the binomials is a negative. I'm going to set up my problem in the same way as before with a t-chart and with one of the binomials modeled on each line of the t-chart. And just as before, I will take the first tile on the horizontal line and multiply it by each of the tiles on the vertical line moving downwards, and I will continue this process until I get to my first negative tile. Now when I go to multiply this tile by my x tile over here, I need to follow the usual rules for a negative factor, which means that my x times 1 is going to give me a negative x or a red tile. Uh, same for my remaining three moves here. I have a negative 1 times 1, which is going to give me a negative 1. Once I have my t-chart filled in, I will once again remove the representations of the binomials and I will combine like terms, this time taking care to pair up and cancel out any positive negative pairings. That's going to leave me with my final answer of x squared plus 2x minus 3. This video was brought to you by Idaho STEM Action Center as part of the iSTEM Library's online database, a searchable catalog of STEM teaching tools available for checkout at locations across Idaho. You can browse available items in your area, as well as curriculum, how-to guides, videos, and more by visiting stem.idaho.gov i-stem-library or by contacting the library location nearest you.